So we're going to make a low poly character in 3ds Max. Start by dragging out a box in the middle of the screen. And we're going to zero it using the values at the bottom. And making sure that the move tool is selected. Zero, zero, zero. Everything's nicely centered. And then we're going to split the box down the middle. So set the width segments to two. Right click on the object name in the stack. Right click, turn to editable poly. Select the polygons on the one side, delete them, and off we go. So in order to see through to the image behind, we need to make sure that the object is set to see through. Uh, there's a shortcut for that, which is LX. And then we can start modeling. Zoom head at three times speed now. Shaping body with as few polygons as possible, just trying to hit the main turning points. Remembering always to spin around and make sure that our form is 3D, we don't end up with it being too boxy. Everything should curve around. Got lots of um, circular forms. Polygons to describe the character. Just checking it's all nicely circular. And then very quickly I'm going to extrude a face there. But just remember to delete that face in the middle because otherwise when uh, we apply the symmetry modifier we'll get some rogue faces down the middle of the character. So now I'm going to apply the symmetry modifier. and do some adjustments and then when I pull out the face using the extrude tool like this spin round make sure that face in the center is deleted otherwise it will cause you errors later on I'm going to zero all these edges sorry vertices by using the align tool and then zeroing all the vertices using the typing values at the bottom so all that center set of vertices is now nicely aligned So I'm going to use minimal polygons for the head. don't really want to get too distracted by this. Uh, it's really not important that the scale, um, maybe an ear or a nose would be helpful, but um, it's just going to take more time. Uh, just going to set uh, the color to be blue to make it more um, obvious in the viewport. Uh, it gives a nice distinction between the wire color and the polygon color. Swift loop tool. Um, I'm being careful to make sure that my arms and legs are going to be six sided. So I have my shoulder armpit has uh, got six sides on it, and my leg has also got six sides on it, and that will make uh, joining up the other objects easier when I get to them. More fussing over features. Alright, so I was going to pull out the leg, but I think I'm going to start with a cylinder. So I make a cylinder, to set the size to 6, and rotate it into place for the arm and the leg. Remember you can shift drag an object to clone it. So turn it to an editable poly and then start sculpting it. I'm not going to join it just yet, just try and get the main features sorted out. Again I'm going for the uh, main turning point, so outlining the knee, um, the major width of the calf, the widest point as it were, and then down to just above the ankle. Uh, the forearm is a a little bit more fiddly because the A pose, everything's slightly off axis, so probably should just rotate that into place as opposed to pulling it around. But anyway, start pulling the vertices around in the front view because that's really easy. Because uh, that's all nicely aligned. And then when we get to the side view, I've kind of got to guess a bit. Um, 
but I know that the forearm arm when viewed from the front is going to have a greater thickness than the bicep and when viewed from the top the bicep is going to have a greater thickness than the forearm uh, so we get this kind of Popeye shape There we go. Just getting the thickness of the shoulder correct. And lots of tweaking to get the form. So now we're ready to join these three bits together. Uh, so I'm going to unhide the body, uh, select all the objects, and do Alt X to change them from see through mode so we can they're now opaque. I'm going to delete. Um, all the faces over the joints. So deleting two quads from each side, which means that we have um, six edges on each side to make the joint. It's really important that we match our number of edges when we do this kind of thing. It's not essential, but it makes it really neat when we do. So that's all done. So now we're going to use the attach tool. So with one object selected, we then click on other objects that we want to add to that first object and then we're going to select the borders and use the bridge tool so we bridge that area and then we're going to go down and do the leg worry about that topology later so here we go one border next border bridge tool and then we're just going to do a bit of tweaking to sort out that joint so let's delete some edges Oops, too many edges. Select, double click that loop and select those, and then we're just going to target weld to get everything into place. And then we're going to move these edges around to make a sort of nice shoulder shape. So um, I'm going to experiment with form a bit here. So by rotating edges, um, so I kind of rotate edges, minimize all the polygons, and then decide that I don't like it and rebuild it. But that's fine when it's this um, low poly kind of character because it's not going to take more than a few seconds to do this kind of thing. The foot is kind of a pain. I'm not entirely sure I'm happy with the way I did it, but um, on a low poly character, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's a little bit fiddly because uh, we've got the splayed feet, which just make it a little bit hard to judge what's going on. I probably should have gone and checked some topology before just diving into the foot because it's a little bit fiddly, but anyway kind of does the job remember me to delete excess edges yeah that would do that's a bit of a paddle foot right now we're on to the hands going to start off with a plane and we're going to reduce the edge count on here uh, because again it's going to have a six sided joint and then just a neat trick we're going to take these edges here and use the split tool to um, separate them all and now those are separate and we can just sculpt our fingers like this not much to see there except yeah select an edge and then drag it out to make a plane and then we're just going to drag these fingers out yeah 
lots of fussing here. Um, you can't see the off screen and I'm sort of looking at my finger joints trying to work out the proportions. Uh, what are we doing here? Oh yeah, add the shell modifier. So yeah, so we already, we're modeling one side of the hand and using this shell modifier to give it thickness. Just kind of keeps everything together. Make sure our fingers are square. Even if we start kind of twisting things around, it makes it um, just a little bit easier to start off with. It's quite a nice shape. A bit more fussing. All right, we're gonna extrude these faces for the thumb. Just kind of get the volume right. Not quite sure what I'm doing at this point, um, but I know I can just edit myself out of any problems. So the main thing is to kind of get the thumb rotation correct and try and keep it uh, in this kind of box style. So I'm just going to square everything up. And then extrude out. Again, looking at my um, hand off screen to just check um, how all the joints align, comparing one joint to another across of each finger, and then just fussing the crap out of this heel joint on the thumb, which always does my head in when I just try and sculpt it like this in polygons. Yeah, that's okay, I'll do. And trying to get the volume of the hand right and just get the fingers slightly tapered. Uh, I keep spinning the edges every now and again when I'm trying to check volume when I'm doing low poly characters, it just um gives a different point of view, as it were, on that on that area. And certainly for the of the thumb there it sort of helped right and then the hand's massive so let's scale it into place rotate it uh, I switched over to vertex mode there just to keep everything um, nicely visible and then I thought it might be nice to kind of splay out the thumb a bit more like it is in the actual image Right, so then we're going to join everything together again. Uh, once we've aligned it into place. More scratching and scaling. And then we can join stuff together using the attach tool. So attach and then bridge the gap like we did before. So that and bridge. Again, just fuss the joint a bit and make it nice and smooth. Um, and it's nice when the hand isn't quite in line with the forearm, so I'm just going to drop it down ever so slightly. There we go. Just gives a bulge above the wrist there. Yeah, and that will do, I think, in terms of the demo. Thanks for listening. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, if you've got any comments, please do so in the comments thread below. If you want me to um, look at any particular issues or like detail in the low poly character, then uh, let me know.